My name is Ahmed uh, Amin. I'm a medical director by uh, a medical doctor by profession and founder and director of Wuchan Organization for Victims of Human Rights Violations. Wuchan is a Kurdish word, means rest after severe tiredness. We are based in uh, northern Iraq, Kurdistan region of Iraq. Uh, we are registered officially as a national NGO in Kurdistan region and in federal uh, government of Iraq. Uh, basically, we are providing uh, uh, services to survivors of severe torture particularly uh, severe trauma, particularly torture survivors and uh, survivors of war trauma and sexual and gender-based uh, violence survivors. Our services, we call it comprehensive services, but emphasizing on mental health and psychosocial uh, services. Actually, the organization started as a program of one of the international NGOs called uh, Heartland Alliance for Human Needs and Human Rights back to 2005. When we started the work, our first program was integrating uh, to, uh, st uh, mental health into the primary health care system in order to provide services to tor torture survivors. We started the work in all Iraq, uh, not just Kurdistan region of Iraq, uh, through recruiting community mental health workers, training them, supervising them, and providing them assistance in order to provide specific uh, mental health and psychosocial services to survivors of, of, of torture and uh, other war trauma. Then uh, uh, in 2011, we uh, established a center in Suleymaniyah, which is one of the governorate uh, of, of Iraq, uh, under the name of Trauma Rehabilit Rehabilitation and Training Center. Uh, in 2007, we established that center. Until 2011, when we talked, uh, we discussed the nationalization of our program with Heartland Alliance, we call it the mother organization, so as uh, to have a national entity uh, for the sustainability reason. And from that time until now, we managed to work independently as an independent uh, national NGO, but we have several uh, partnership and funds from uh, international NGOs, UN agencies and other donors. Yeah, it seems, uh, John, there is there are no nation or uh, no one ex 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 exempted from torture. However, uh, we we based on our experience, uh, minority groups, particularly religious minority and ethnic minor minorities, are more subjected to discrimination and, 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 and torture, violation and torture. Uh, when it comes to uh, by, by whom, I would say, by all the forces. However, uh, uh, what we call it anti-terror force of the government or security force, they are more practicing that, uh, especially uh, uh, when it comes to, 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 to the religious minorities there are conflict, always conflict between the, the, the minorities or, or different sectors of, of, of uh, religions. Uh, and I'm not sure if you are familiar with the ISIS or Islamic State of, of, of Iraq and Syria or that uh, they have captured, after they have captured Mosul and some part of, of other uh, cities of Iraq. Uh, after liberation, there have been many, unfortunately, many kids, minors, have been uh, kept and jailed, detained by security forces because of their, uh, or because they have been claimed to be affiliated with ISIS. And that's uh, reported by Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch as well. So minorities are are subjected always and political parties opposition polit members of, of, of opposition political parties from time to time also subjected to 
to ill treatment and torture. So uh, after we call it 2000 liberation, let's call it liberation of Mosul, main city of Iraq. So, uh, unfortunately, as I said, many kids were, were, were detained, captured because of their affiliation with ISIS. And we knew that from the international reports, and we knew that from the national authorities that they have been uh, detained in one of the, some of them, in one of the detention centers in Kurdistan, in Erbil. So we uh, approached the, the, the Ministry of Interior and Ministry of Labor and Social Affairs that uh, we would like to provide them with uh, the services uh, inside the detention center. And they agreed, uh, uh, they agreed uh, to have that service for them. So we accessed the detention center, juvenile detention center in Erbil, and we worked with some of them. Still, we are working with them. Uh, unfortunately, uh, most, I don't know the percentage, but, but some or most of them have been subjected to torture. Uh, not all of them, well, very few of them, it seems that they have been committed crime, but there are 13, 14, and we understand that when Daesh were in Mosul, Daesh captured Mosul, they, they promised them with fancy things, and they were teenagers and kids, uh, they uh, believed in them. Uh, so most of them, they haven't done crimes, they have been affiliated with their ideas and uh, we, we, we talked, we told uh, the directorate of the prison that they need support, not, 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 they don't need to be detained, they don't need to be uh, tortured, no one needs to be tortured, but particularly the, the kids, they need to be rehabilitated. So that's how we are working with them for the last two years and they uh, gave us an uh, office inside the detention center, still we are working with them. We use several kind of life skills source to, to, for them to use it uh, for, uh, to deal and, and, and self-care, uh, coping skills source to deal with their traumatic events. Actually, uh, we are working with the juvenile detention center staff. They have their own uh, social worker psychologists and we work with them. We work with the, the government. Uh, the place that we are working inside is, uh, is juvenile uh, detention center, which belongs to Ministry of Labor and Social Affairs. Those kids, they have not been tortured there. They have been detained there. but. During the process of interrogation, when they were captured by security force, by militia, by militaries, they have been tortured. So here is the, the place that they are staying right now, or staying there, is the end, uh, is, the, is the space that they, they are there, they feel safe. Otherwise, torture happened before that. So, uh, and the services, as you, you ask, how it perceived by people, they appreciate the services we are providing because the, we were been lucky, uh, the staff and the organization, we were lucky because we have many uh, connections with, with outsider, uh, experts from outsiders, including uh, experts from Johns Hopkins University based in Baltimore in the United States. They have a great, uh, they have many, many great interventions that have been assessed in several settings, including Iraq. And those kind of intervention we are using is by itself evidence-based and unique. As I said, the organization was lucky to have that connection. So we don't want to keep the skills and, and knowledge with us, with ourselves only. That's why we wanted to institutionalize the, the services. So people, Ministry of Labor and Social Affairs, the, even the guards, we call them monitor inside the detention centers. Uh, they appreciate what, what we are doing for them. And of course, we get, always we get 
feedback from we call them clients or clients beneficiaries the satisfactions of the service anonymously we get a lot of praise by by them that they that they could use the toad skills and knowledge for improving their situations and when it comes to the the the, the places the police station sometimes we are working with the police stations as well uh, we cannot or we not we cannot we don't want to jeopardize the the services we are providing uh, we cannot uh, provide for example legal services we are pure mental health psychosocial organization so we work with other organizations for providing for example legal uh, assistance when it comes to media and documentation of of human rights violation uh, we don't want, we, we don't have expertise in dealing with, with those kind of things. So, for example, we don't know where torture happened until an organization like Human Rights Watch give a report or another organization, maybe local organization, tell us the, 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 uh, the situation. So we have shortages uh, in those regards. Uh, although we want to keep the quality of mental health and psychosocial for the survivors and not to widen in our scope uh, that we cannot, uh, we lose the quality. When we started our first role, we were the first and maybe the only organization work in, uh, in that regard in Kurdistan. And in Iraq, there was another organization in Basra, South of Iraq. We knew that there are some attempts to have some uh, similar centers or, 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 or services in Baghdad as well. So we work with uh, the survivors, they have their own association in Kurdistan region and in, in, in the rest of Iraq. In Kurdistan region, there are several associations. For example, they have former prisoner association. Uh, prisoner association of recent years in baghdad they have iraqi prisoner association those association they have their uh, members registered with them and uh, they are political uh, prisoners when it comes to to torture maybe all or almost all political prisoners have been subjected to torture so we work with the first way we work with the political prisoner association or prisoner association and with them we advocated for other services not just for for mental health so one of the works i done back to 2006 i think or seven uh, i worked uh, with the ministry of health that the the prisoners or torture survivors they need uh, uh, quality services they need specific attention that cannot be uh, given or provided within the current system so they uh, listen to us and they ask for uh, training for example how to 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 deal with them and that's how we conducted many trainings for physicians for nurses those that provide services to them and then we link them with the social and legal uh, services. When it comes to legal, uh, the good thing is survivors are entitled to be compensated, political prisoner survivors. But how to do that, which kind of mechanism, that was uh, uh, not, not secured and not uh, clear. We, we managed to work with several agencies that to work on individual cases. The obvious cases, they got their compensation, but the, the complicated cases uh, couldn't. We managed to work with government and uh, to, to have compensation. Compensation years, we, we are talking about, they get retirement or pension costs. Some of them get land source to build uh, houses and other benefit, benefits benefits. Actually, we have both and uh, literatures and experience in all country revealed unfortunately that 
the impact of torture is uh, long lasting for years, uh, and even there are studies that uh, the impact is uh, trans is is transferred to generation. Uh, so a father symptoms transfer to uh, his apparent symptoms or father symptoms transfer to his kids as well. Uh, although uh, nowadays we have less uh, survivors of, of, of previous regime, but uh, we had, uh, still we are dealing with those survivors, but unfortunately, since the, 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 the recent survivors are so in, 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 in urgent and great need, we are dealing with those cases mostly.